this is Scott Spears, and welcome to the holiday edition of Scott Spears Now. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas to everybody out there. I hope you're having a wonderful time this holiday season. This year, we have a treat for you. We have got an hour in store you're not going to want to miss. It's a walk down memory lane, but it's a holiday walk down memory lane tied to the state of Ohio and certainly Washington, D.C. As you can see, my guest today is the 40th Treasurer of the United States, former Treasurer of the state of Ohio and Treasurer of Marion County, something nobody else has ever done in the history of the world at this particular point, Mary Ellen Withrow, and she's going to share some Christmas memories uh, here in Marion and on the state level and from Washington, and this is going to be a trip. We've got pictures and Christmas cards and ornaments. You are not going to want to miss it. Happy holidays, Mary Ellen. Thank you. The same to you. <laughs> now, Mary Ellen, it, do you like eggnog? No. No? no Never I, did like eggnog? Uh, no. You know, a lot of people like that. At how, Do you like fruitcake? Yes, uh, certain ones. Certain, you yeah. know, some of them are a little, uh, a little too much. Little too much during the holiday time, and uh, we're going to partake in the holidays here. And we have some recipes too, by the way, that we're going to give throughout this episode. Now, Mary Ellen has some cards. Now, how did the tradition? Did, did you always send out cards? Yes, I did. Yes. I I sent out a lot of cards. Um, and I don't have um, any of the cards I sent out when I was Marion County Treasurer, but I've, I, and I drew my, most of my cards when I was State Treasurer. And so this is the first one that I did for when I was State Treasurer. Is that okay? Yep. You see it? Yeah, and yeah, there. Okay, you can read that. Now what kind of people would you send a card to? Everybody. Had a list of everybody? Yeah, a huge list. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. The Treasurer's First Christmas. Now would this been, have been your first Christmas as State Treasurer? Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, how nice. Yeah. Wishing you a, ha a holiday filled with happy, happy, let's see here. Oh, that one Mary Ellen? Happy hours. Happy hours. Yeah. Happy hours and a new year filled with happy days. Very nice. Mary Ellen and Norman. And this this one I don't know if it'll show up. It's it was a religious. Uh, it shows up okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was uh, wishing you a joyous holiday season and a new year filled with peace and happiness. <laughs> State Treasurer, Mary Ellen Withrow and Norman. Oh, how nice. And this one has the seal, or the treasurer, of the state of Ohio, the seal there. Yeah. Very nice. How nice. How many people were on your list, Mary Ellen, would you say? Oh, probably about 500. Wow. Yeah. This was done by my granddaughter, Emily. Uh, she did a couple of them for me, and uh, she was about... 11 years old when she did this. Not a tree, not a creature. Yeah, they've got it on the back. Artwork by Emily Rizzo, granddaughter of Ohio treasure, Mary Ellen Withrow. And, you know, not a creature. Uh, wishing you every happiness this holiday season and throughout the coming year. Oh, very nice. Now, how did it come about that your granddaughter would do this? Well, she uh, she was drawing things, and I thought, I'm going to see if she can do something for me for the Christmas card. So she did um, she did this one, too. Uh, all creatures, great and small. And I, I really like this one. And wishing you a joyous holiday season. It's all about the same on the inside. Now, did you go to a certain place to have these cards printed, Mary Ellen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know where, but they, yeah. they took care of they it. They took care of it. Yeah. Very nice. Inside of the cards, very nicely printed. And I used my eagle here. I, I drew that one. Um, I have that on a lot of things. May the spirit of the holiday season be yours today and all through the coming year. 
and that also has the seal on it there. Oh, yeah. very nice. Mm -hmm. Now you drew this one, Mary Ellen? Yeah. It's a very nice picture there. Now how did the idea come about that you would design the front of the cards? Well, I decided to try to do that. They, um, they had taken a picture of my house, oh here, this one, where I lived and they were going to uh, send this one out and evidently I did. It says, best wishes for a happy holiday season and a peaceful new year, Mary Ellen Withrow and family. And that was where I lived when I was uh, when I was state treasurer. And um, then I just after that one, then I decided to uh, do my own cards. Yeah, I did this one. Yeah, and uh, this is um, this has the seal in it. May the spirit of the holiday season be yours today and all through the coming year. And it's. It's plants, you know. You know, for people today who don't send out cards, how important was it in this time frame, the 1980s, to send out cards to people? Well, it was important to me mm -hmm. because I was in office and I wanted to uh, let people know I was thinking about them. And um, that was the whole thing. This one is uh, another one that I sent out, but it, I didn't do this one. It's uh, just a, a different card. Uh, it's Peace. Seasons, greetings, and best wishes for a happy new year. It has the state seal on it, too. You know, it's, it's interesting for kids who are watching this now to know how important it was to do things like this, and everybody used to have a Christmas card list. Yes. And send out things all the time. I, I had a big Christmas card list. And then this is uh, an invitation. Let's see. Um, yeah, the Vice President and Mrs. Gore invite you to a holiday reception Tuesday, December 17th, 630 to 8 o'clock. The Vice President's Residence, 34th and Massachusetts Avenue, Northwest Washington, D.C. And um, that was the card. And, and we would be invited to the White House as well. Um, in fact, um, most of the time we went to the White House. So the president and the vice president both had a holiday reception, yes. holiday party. Yes. Now, what were the holiday parties like when Al Gore was vice president? Would, would it be at the vice president's home? Yeah, he would have it at his home. But then there were times when he was also at the White House. In fact, do you want me to show the pictures here? Yeah. Um, now, this is very interesting because this is... Uh, how many people would you say, whoa, here we go. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, is that about right? Yeah. Uh, in fact, there is the, uh, yeah, it, the, the letter, I, I hadn't looked to see what the letter said. It says, uh, Honorable Marion Withrow and Mr. Norman Withrow, 8208 Moreland Lane, that's where we lived, Bethesda, Maryland. 20817. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Withrow, the President was pleased to see you at the White House on December 16th for the holiday reception. He thought you might like to have the enclosed, enclosed, enclosed photographs as a memento of the evening. I send along my best wishes to you for a happy holiday season and much joy in the new millennium. And um, there, that's that's the picture. Wow, what yes. a very nice picture. So you would go to the uh, White House Christmas party. Yes. And then they would send back the pictures that they took. Yes. That's nice. And it was the social social secretary yes. who would take care of all this. Yes. December 21st, 1999. How about that? Well, that is a piece of history. And then this one... Um, very nice. Okay. 
you know, this is um, at the White House uh, to Norm and Marianne Withrow with best wishes, Al Gore and uh, Tipper. No, it was at um, it was at the uh, vice president's house there. Excuse me, that's. But the other one was at the White House. That was at the yeah. White House, uh -huh. and this is at the vice president's yes. yeah, house. Right. Oh, and then Al and uh, Tipper even autographed that. Well, that's very nice. And this is an invitation or a Christmas card when I was U.S. Treasurer. Um, best wishes and holiday greetings. May your new year be filled with joy. Sincerely, Marion Withrow and Norman, Treasure of the United States. I, I love the uh, printing on that. We would send that to all the um, offices uh, and, uh, and oh, you know, the people I wanted to send them to, but to, to all the offices in, in Treasury, particularly, and the president and the, the vice president. Absolutely. Yeah. Now this would have been December of 2000, so this would have been your last Christmas yes. in Washington. Yes, yes it was. It was the last one. My goodness. So these would go to the people in Washington as a nice season's greeting. Yes. That is that is a nice card. It looks like um, crane paper to me too. I think it's crane paper. <coughs> it's definitely an, an embossed on the back and everything. Yeah. In, in Washington, what are those parties at the White House like? Well, they're, um, they're really nice. You meet, you have your picture taken with the uh, <coughs> president and whoever else is there. And <clears throat> there's food. Uh, it's nibbly food. And um, it was the same at the vice president's house. Um, and then we also had... Um, we had uh, potlucks at Treasury. <laughs> in the, in the, the food would be clear down the aisle in Treasury. And, um, and they also had contests on our door. We had door contests. And I remember I had a frog that sang some Christmas song. <laughs> and I, I would put that up on my door. And the guy in the next office, it was, it was not a special office of any kind, but they were up all night making, fixing their door and the window, and they had a whole winter scene out there, and of course they won the contest. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was definitely a competition. Yes, and then we also would have a dinner with the Secretary of the Treasury, um, especially when Bob Rubin was there. He lived in a hotel, and I can't remember which one, but he would have the event at the uh, hotel, and he'd have a, like a dinner. It was a, kind of a formal dinner, and um, it was very nice. What were the trees and the decorations like at the uh, White House? They were just beautiful. And, and then they would also give us a chance to take people that we wanted to, to show them the White House. And that would be in the daytime, in different days. And I took um, the widows that lived next door to me. Uh, one of them was in a wheelchair. And uh, she got to go through the kitchen because of the wheelchair. <laughs> so she got to see things nobody else saw. and. Um, Oh, they were so excited because they had never been to the White House. And, and I tried to take a lot of different people to uh, go through, you know. It was, it was so beautiful with the, um, the trees were everywhere. And this one tree would have things on it from all over the United States. And you'd look for things, you know, from Ohio to see what the Ohioans had on there. And uh, just all the the work that went into Christmas, it was it was fantastic. Now the lighting of the White House or the uh, Christmas tree in Washington is a big deal. Yes, and you've attended that ceremony as well. Yes, it's right behind the White House, and it's you know the Treasury's right there. I'm right bes beside the White House, so uh, the the Christmas tree was gorgeous. It would 
change colors. That's what I just love to see it. And the ceremony was always held early in December, and they would have somebody um, important come and entertain. And um, I should have looked this up. Uh, I, I can't remember her name, but a singer. We had a singer there, and you'd probably know who it was if I could remember her name. But um, she, well, it was really cold. And um, they had this tent behind the event where people could go in and warm up. And I went back there to warm up, and her mother was back there, and I, I got to talking to her mother, and then she came back, and uh, I talked to her. And um, someday I'll have to tell you who that was. <laughs> I can't think of it now. But uh, those events were special, and the tree was just beautiful. You know. Now, at Christmas time, you have the White House Christmas party, the event, the reception at the vice presidential home the White House Christmas tree lighting. Is it busier at Christmas? Are you constantly going? Well, you're busy, but um, it's just, uh, you you really look forward to it, you know. I bet, it, when you were younger, what was important uh, at holiday time when you were a young girl? Mm, that's a hard question. Mm -hmm. Well, probably Christmas. <laughs> Christmas, yeah. Well, it's, it's a big day for everybody. Yes. <laughs> did, did you go and see Santa Claus and things like that when you were young? No. No? I don't remember ever going to see Santa Claus myself. I took my children all to see Santa Claus, but um, I, don't, I don't think I ever went to see him. Yeah. Now, is there a gift that you remember as a child that you got that sticks out in your mind? Yes, my Betsy Wetsy doll. It was. My, <laughs> I I had the best time with that doll. You know, you can imagine what it did. I, I yeah, can. Yeah. I can. <laughs> and, and that was revolutionary yes. in those days. Oh, it was. It was the first time for that type of thing. Yeah. So, so I was fascinated with that. And um, yeah, uh, we didn't get a lot of presents for Christmas, but um, we had a great time. Now, when you lived in in uh, Maryland, did you came back usually to Ohio for Christmas. Yes, I did. I wanted to be with my family. What is it like as a mother and a grandmother to be back home with the kids for Christmas? Oh, I, I just enjoy being with my family more than anything, yeah. And what are Christmases like now? Well, same thing. I want to be with my family. Yeah, I'm going to be. Yeah. And I think that's an important thing. It is. You know, that's what the it holidays is. are all about. That's right. And I wanted to show this, too. Uh, they would give you different things uh, after from the Christmas, wherever you were at the Christmas party. We received a lot of, of these uh, from the vice president. And different ones, different years, and then we would receive something in the mail later on. Um, it would be in a folder like this. This says 200. Oh, this is the anniversary now. Um, this painting and. Now this would come from the vice president? No, this is from the president. Oh, the president? Yeah. Um, there. Um, okay. Is that okay? Wow, look at that. Dawn, it says Dawn, D-A-W-N. Um, Jamie Wyeth, 2000. Dawn at the White House. Uh-huh. What a beautiful picture that yeah, is. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I, I got, there's a lot more. I. I don't know where they are. I had lots of them. So these would be the, the gifts that the president would send out? Yes. Wow, that's very yeah. nice. Yeah. You know, it's interesting to know that he would do this with so many people because I imagine there are a lot of people on his list. Well, I imagine there are. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Christmas, I think, would have to be a hugely busy time for the president. Yes. And um, vice president. The whole time is it? Busy time I bet there isn't much downtime. No, no, not a whole lot of downtime at all. And and you know, anytime uh, we would get a new uh, coin or a new um, redesign a bill, um, 
we well, and when I fir first got the the bill with my name on it, uh, I'd send a, a sample to the or really to the first lady. I'd send it to her. Yeah. Now, what, the first lady was at these parties as well. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes, and um, well, Martha Stewart would be there with her house, her gingerbread house, always. Wow. And then. Then there would be lots of people, yeah. That's interesting. So there would be a lot of VIPs at these events from outside of Washington. Yes. Um, people, there would be people from Marion. Um, people that would be invited for some reason, you know. Now, what is, what's the significance behind Martha Stewart in a gingerbread house? Well, because she uh, is famous for that. Oh. And, and evidently they liked her gingerbread house better than anybody else's, so she would do it every year. Now the grounds of the White House at Christmas, are there a lot of wreaths and, and things like that? You know, I don't remember uh, that many lights outside other than the, uh, the big Christmas tree. Um, no, it's all inside pretty much. Now the the city of Washington itself, Washington D.C., is it done up for the holidays? Did... Yes, it's decorated. I'm I'm trying to remember. I I can't really um, remember how they decorated. Yeah. Now at Treasury, there were special events that went on as well as you say you would have dinner with people and. Uh, now your staff, did you take them out for a dinner every year or, or did that, was there a little party inside the office? Well, yeah, we had uh, a lot of, you the know, I'd, yeah, I'd, well, not just, we'd, we'd go out to eat. Oh, yeah, okay. I'd take them out to eat. And, um, yes, it, it was, um, I, I, I'm trying to um, decide if it was any different the rest of the year. I mean, we were always... Um, having parties too, you know, it's just it was different at Christmas because there was a lot of decoration. Was there ever a holiday in Washington where the weather was very snowy and... Oh yes, yeah. yeah. The day after I was sworn in it was like a blizzard. It was a blizzard the day I was sworn in actually and the next day uh, there was, um, it was slush and I didn't have any boots and um, if, if I had to go to this event and it was uh, a little difficult without boots. <laughs> now, now at the when it came to going to the holiday parties was that something you made a point to get a, a dress and everybody dressed a certain way to go to these parties? Well yes you dressed up um, but I had to dress up all the time. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Now, were you ever much uh, for shopping, going out to the stores and things like that during the holidays? Well, I, I did it whenever I thought it was necessary, not necessarily at the holidays. Yeah. You know, that's a thing that really these days has completely changed with the internet. A lot of people just order their gifts and they come right to their door. Right. But there was a time when we had malls and huge malls that would mm -hmm. be decorated and Christmas music going all the time. And boy, Santa Claus was in every mall to get yes. pictures and everything yes. with him. Yes, I would, I'd come back home to Marion and go see Santa Claus here with my grandchildren. Yes. <laughs> now, when when you would come back home during that time, when you were the treasurer of the United States, what was it like to come back to Marion during Christmas time? Well, it was good. I always enjoyed it being at home. Yeah, I, I looked forward to that. Now, we are going to have some recipes coming up here, and we've also got ornaments, but I did want to show somebody with, or show the audience here with our eggnog, because some people wonder what an interesting drink would be for the holidays. And it's easy to do. Now, you can do this however you like, but you just get some eggnog from your store, whatever you'd like. And some people like to put rum or whatever it is in their eggnog. Now, you can do that if you like, but this is just plain old eggnog. You get it at the store, and you put it there in your cup. And the interesting thing about this is, is that just eggnog by itself is a little loose. Doesn't really say much for the holiday. But what a lot of people do during holiday time 
is they get the candy canes, which are peppermint. And then you put the candy cane oh. in the eggnog, huh. and it dresses it up there a little bit. Yeah, it looks better. Yeah, and like <laughs> I say, you can put whatever you like in that, but there you go. So whatever you're at your holiday party, you put a little candy cane in there. And some people can put, um, what, what have you heard people put it? I know they put rum. Yeah, I in don't eggnog. know. They put about anything. They put about anything in there because eggnog will mask just about anything. But this is a nice holiday drink that people can use. Now, some people, it's always good. Now, this is a little tip for you. It's always good to leave the wrapper on the candy cane because some people do not like peppermint. So that way, if they don't like the peppermint, they can pull the candy cane out after you give it to them for the holiday decoration. And if they do like the peppermint, they can open up the candy cane and drop it in there. Okay. So that's a good holiday drink. There's a drink tip for you. Okay. Now, Mary Ellen, as far as recipes go in the holidays, uh, what sticks out in your mind? Well, I was trying to remember what I took to the potlucks at the treasury. And the two things that I can remember, I took the chocolate icebox cake and I took divinity. That's candy. You right. Know, you know. But uh, this, uh, those two things, I remember taking those and I don't remember anything else. Now, divinity, for people who don't know, now what is divinity? Divinity is uh, a white um, candy. Uh, it's got a lot of, uh, it's got eggs in it and it's, I, I really like divinity. Yeah. Now I'll just I'll read this for people because who knows maybe somebody will want to make it who's okay. watching this program. Okay. You get five cups of sugar, one cup of light Cairo syrup, and one and a half cup water. That's all you need. You cover all that and you bring it to a boil slowly. Remove cover and cook over low heat until mixture registers 238 or softball. Mm -hmm. Let syrup stand five minutes and add two stiffly beaten egg whites. Beat until mixture starts to lose its shine. Nuts or candied cherries may be added. Drop by spoonfuls on wax paper. Now did you usually add the cherries and the nuts? I put the nuts in. I didn't always do the cherries. Yeah. Was there a particular type of nut that you used? Yeah, a uh, pecan. Pecan. Mm -hmm. Those sound very good. I oh, oh, it's good. Yeah, it's very good. Now, the chocolate icebox cake, what does that look like when it's finished? Well, it's like, almost like a pudding, but oh, is it good. <laughs> well, and, and here it is for you. Now, I, now, I got that recipe from my friend Merle Ashey and his wife. They gave me that recipe and... Um, we still make it, you know. And he'll be celebrating his 100th Christmas this year? No. 99th? Yeah, 99th this year. My he'll, goodness. He'll be 100 in May. And he's still doing good. <laughs> yes. That's good to hear. Yes. Now here's the chocolate, two, two minutes left to go, and we're going to come back and talk ornaments after this. But here's the chocolate ice box cake. One pound of sweet chocolate or two large Hershey bars, one dozen lady fingers, six eggs, one and a half teaspoon, or tablespoons, excuse me, sugar, Half a teaspoon of vanilla. Melt chocolate on top of double boiler. Add egg yolks, one at a time. Remove from fire. Add egg whites, stiffly beaten with sugar and vanilla. Line boil with lady fingers and add chocolate mixture. Keep in refrigerator at least a day before serving. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna come back and find out why you have to keep it in the refrigerator a day before serving right after this short but important timeout. Back with more holiday fun. Hey, Scott Spears back with you here on the holiday episode of Scott Spears Now. Christmas in Washington, the theme this year with the 40th Treasurer of the United States, Mary Ellen Withrow, and we have been recounting Christmases of years past. We've given you recipes that Mary Ellen would bring to Christmas parties. We've seen invitations to the White House, uh, cards that Mary Ellen designed and sent out, invitations to uh, Al Gore's house, who was vice president at the time, Great, great pictures that we've seen uh, from the White House Christmas parties. Vice President Al Gore in the Christmas party that was held at his residence. What a beautiful picture that is. And then I think the one that, I think this was actually in the paper at one point, Mary yeah, Ellen. It was, yeah. Of uh, Norman and Bill Clinton and Mary Ellen Withrow at a Christmas White House party. Does not get any better than that. And the letter that was sent that followed it. We've also seen gifts that were given. Now, before we went to break, we were talking about the chocolate ice box cake, which was the recipe, the dessert, that Mary Ellen would bring to the potluck at Treasury, was it, Mary Ellen? Yes. 
Yeah. Now, we gave the recipe before we went to break there, but why does it have to be kept in the refrigerator for a day before you serve it? Well, I don't know. It's just better when you do. It, it needs to get to know one another in the <laughs> recipe. <laughs> you know, it, it sounds delicious. <laughs> well, I'll tell you where the hard part about that recipe, where you, when you add the egg yolks, you add them to the mixture that you've cooked, you know, the chocolate mixture, one at a time, and you have to beat it, and it takes a lot of muscle because there's, how many, six egg yolks? Six eggs, yeah. Yeah. So it, it takes, I have, have to have somebody else help me because I can't do it anymore. But, um, but it is good. It's got such a good flavor. Now at the holidays, Mary Ellen, do you still make these things? Yeah, I have. I've made it uh, within the last year. Yeah. Oh wow. They want me to bring it for Christmas or Thanksgiving, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> you said I'm not going to do it. It's just too much. It's too yeah. Much. Now, right. do you have a special? Because I know that a lot of people have recipes, and everybody can look at the same recipe, but they don't make it the same. Probably. Yeah. yeah. And I think that they probably why they want you to make it. But it sounds timely. Well, it's a lot of work. Yeah. 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 So, one thing, we, we did, we gave the recipe for the uh, little drinks here with candy canes and eggnog. Now, Mary Ellen, you're not a fan of eggnog. No, not at all. Now, what drink do you prefer at the holiday? I drink coffee. <laughs> coffee at the Well, you know, whatever you enjoy. Yeah. That's right. But you do like the fruitcake. Now, do you like the Claxton fruitcakes? Yes, that's the only one I like. Um, and I used to like it. I don't know if I still do. You know, I don't know about these things. I've never enjoyed them, but people seem to like them. It's from the old Claxton, Claxton, it's called the old Claxton, world famous Claxton fruitcake. And they're from a place in Claxton, Georgia, which we called the bakery at one point. And basically the bakery is the town. When I was county treasurer, those things kept me alive around the holidays. I, you know, I'd get hungry in the office. And I'd eat that stuff, yeah. Now, were you ever a fan of the holiday Christmas cookies where, where people decorate them like Santa Claus? Uh, well, it's nice that people do that, but no, I'm not a fan. Not really. a fan of those? No. Now, when it comes to Christmas dinner, of course, everybody on Thanksgiving will either have turkey or ham. What was Christmas dinner for you? Turkey. Turkey. Well, no, turkey was Thanksgiving. Um... I, I guess we usually had, um, I don't know, beef for, um, um, it, it was uh, really, it was like a roast beef. It had a name, but it, it's really good, yeah. Now the thing, some people are very good. Did you like to decorate at home or in your office? Well, I did, yes. I don't anymore, I don't decorate anymore, but except for just a couple of things, but uh, I used to decorate. Now, the one thing that has become an art, and I think it is an art when you look at people's trees, are mm -hmm. wrapping those gifts. Mm -hmm. Were you a good wrapper? I could do a nice job if I took the time. Mm -hmm. There is a trick to that, though. Yes. Oh, yeah. You've got to fold those corners right. and get the just the right amount of wrapping paper. That's right. And, and that can be very time-consuming at the holiday. That's right. Now, uh, let's see here. Well, one thing we haven't done is the ornaments. Now, at what kind of tree did you have, Mary Ellen, when you were... I had an artificial tree, and I would uh, have it decorated. I would decorate it, and I'd take it up in the attic, all decorated every year, and bring it down the next year. <laughs> all decorated. <laughs> and one year, the we had a squirrel get in the attic, and he chewed through the wires in the center about this far from the top of the tree. And, um, and that was the end of the Christmas tree. Oh, that was the end. <laughs> the, the squirrel took care of the lights. He chewed, he chewed through those heavy wires in the center. I said, I'd, I'd like to see his teeth after he did that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, decorating can be a big job. I can see why oh, yes. you wouldn't want to decorate that tree every year. My, my daughters do a beautiful job of decorating their trees. You know, it's a lot of work. Some people really get into that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, our tree here at the studio, people can't see it because it's out of the shot, but we top it with a Santa hat, which a lot of people do. A lot of people use the angel, a lot of people use the star. Yeah. What was on top of your tree, Mary Ellen? I think an angel. Mm -hmm. An angel. Now, these days, do you put up a tree at all at home? 
No, I don't have a tree anymore. But they decorate primrose beautifully. Oh yes, yeah, they do. Sometimes I help. Yeah. It's, it's just very, very nice in there. Now, the ornaments that we're going to see are really, uh, they're just, you'll have to see them to, to know what I'm talking about. Mary Ellen, what ornaments do we have here? Okay, well, we have the ornaments that they make at Treasury every year. They make an ornament, ornament for one of their uh, divisions. Uh, this one is for the mint. Um, it's really pretty. It's gold and um, the United, oh. United States Mint 1996. Isn't that something? Uh-huh. And My I got goodness. another one just like it here. What year is this? It's 1996 also. Now, when, when these are going out, you were treasurer of the United States. Do you oversee this or is this just something that's made every year? Oh, I don't have anything to do with it. Um, um, the um, it's the historical society uh, within the um, treasury that that does these. Now, who would get these? Well, you buy them. You can buy them. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yes. Now, before the internet days, did you have to go to Washington to buy these, or were they available other places? Well, you know, I don't know. Um, I'm looking for this. This is uh, 1780. Um, they are in different places probably, but, um, of course I bought them at Treasury, yeah. But it, this is, isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. I just think that's beautiful. There was some real work done on that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Look at this. Department of Treasury. And that was the building. Yep. That's the Treasury. Wow, look at that. And this is also Treasury. This is another one, um, but this is the 200th anniversary Christmas 2000, yeah. 200th yeah. anniversary of... Treasury. Treasury, Christmas mm -hmm. 2000. Mm -hmm. My goodness. And this is, this is a very similar, a very similar one um, than the other, but it's, it's a different, it's... Um, 1789 on the back nothing on the front as far as a date now where was your office mary ellen oh uh, here this I'll, I'll show you yeah okay okay the second the second row i was the first the first five windows there. Oh, okay. On the yeah. second floor. Right, right. Yeah, right, right there. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. From the right. Yeah. No. Oh, no. Yeah, it is from the right. Yeah. First five windows. Yeah. Now, for people who've never been to the Treasury, what's in this building? Your office is there. Yes. Um, well, yeah, the IRS, all the Treasury uh, divisions were in there, um, except. I don't think ATF was in there, but you know, um, ATF is now with Homeland Security, and um, the Secret Service is now with Homeland Security, and I think the uh, police, the big police department in Washington, uh, I don't have the correct name for it, but that um, I think was also in Homeland Security now. Um, that happened after I was there. It, um, the head of uh, the Secretary of the Treasury went to Africa and when he came back he had lost about six of his divisions. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I always thought that that would be a shock. <laughs> that, that would do it. That would do it. Yeah. Now this ornament over here Mary Ellen is an airplane? Yes this is um, this is done by the um, White House Historical Society. This is Eisenhower's um, um, ornament that they did for his year. You know, I have all the um, uh, all the um, emblems for the presidents from George Washington. Clear. It's this year is um, Ford, but I didn't. I didn't get Ford's. I didn't care for it. Um, 
but last year was Nixon. So it started in 1982 with the White House doing these ornaments, and those are in my museum too. Now they try to uh, have something to do with the president. Yes, Yeah. yes, they do. Um, but some of them really don't come across. But uh, then there's a lot of um, Christmas trees, or there's probably about three or four Christmas trees in the bunch. And uh, now Harding had a, I think he had a car. Um, I, I'm trying to remember what Harding had. Have you seen it? I don't think I have seen Harding's. Yeah, well, anyway, um, but but that's um, that that's the White House. But this, the ones I just had here are the uh, Treasury uh, Christmas ornaments. Now, and again, those can be seen at your museum, and these pictures, I believe, also can be seen yes. at the museum. Yes. Uh -huh. Now, again, the museum's housed in the Marion County Historical Society, you should know that, and uh, just call them, and they can set up a tour for you, and if you have any questions, I'm sure Mary Ellen would be glad to answer those as well, about anything in the museum. Uh, you were there this past week. Yes. How are, how are things going over at the Historical Society? Great. Good. Yeah, I had, I had visitors. And I took them over to see it, yeah. Now, when people go in there, I know I've asked you this before, but for people on this holiday episode, what is important for people to see there when they go in? Well, my Guinness Book of Records, my John Glenn $20 bill that he took up in space, and the West Point, the uh, gold bars at West Point, and the... Um, fractured currency that was used in the Civil War because they didn't have the money to make coins. And then we have all the uh, dollar coins that were created in the last century. Uh, the Morgan, the Peace, the Eisenhower, the Susan B. Anthony, and, this, and the Sacagawea. And oh, there's um, lots of things in there. It, it, um, it's hard to really understand everything that happened while I was in office. You know, Mary Ellen, we were talking during the break there about your commute every day. Mm -hmm. Now, you did not live in Washington, D.C. I lived in Bethesda. Bethesda. Mm -hmm. Now, that was how far from your house to your office? It was eight miles. Eight miles. Mm -hmm. And it took you how long to get there every day? About an hour. An hour. Mm -hmm. Now, for people who don't, why does it take so long to get there? For people who don't, wouldn't understand why eight miles would take an hour. Well, it's the traffic. Now, did you drive in? Mm-hmm. That must be... Uh, is it frustrating after a while to be in that traffic every morning? Well, it's frustrating when it doesn't move. And, and, and if anything happens, especially in the evening, like bad weather, uh, I have just sat there and sat there and sat there. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Now, were your mother and father big fans of Christmas? Yes, they, they enjoyed Christmas. Was she a mother who liked to cook and things like that and get yes. ready for the holiday? She was a good cook, yeah. You know, and I think a lot of people remember back to childhood Christmases as maybe some of their most fond times. Well, yes. Um, yeah, my grandma lived with us for a while, and um, she was named Mary Ellen. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. So you were named for your grandmother. I was, my mother's mother, yeah. Oh. And um, yeah, she was she was there. And uh, my other grandmother and grandfather were still alive too for quite a while. Yeah. Now a big part of the holidays, of course, is the music. Do you have a favorite Christmas song? Well, I have a lot of them. Yeah, I do. I'm trying to think what would be my favorite. Um, I like all of it. You know, it's interesting because you hear that music basically for a month and a mm -hmm. half a year. Mm -hmm. And that's it. But so many people know all of these songs. Jingle Bells, and We Wish You a Merry Christmas, and Silent Night, and uh, mm -hmm. The First Noel. But there's only one time of year where we really get these out. And I think that's why they're so special to people. Yes, I can't think of the... It was an opera singer that sang this song right now. I can't think what it was, but that was my favorite, you know. Now, at Christmas time, do you have Christmas music playing mm -hmm. around the house? Mm -hmm. yeah. It really sets the mood. It does for me, yeah. yeah. Now, as far as Christmas stories or movies or, or television programs, are, are any of those in your life every year? 
Not really. I know a lot of people watch <laughs> certain movies every year. I don't do that. No. Now, do you think that Christmas is commercialized? I. It's very interesting. Today I was in the store and I noticed that now they have uh, Grinch coffee creamer. Oh. They have Grinch yes. whoopee cushions. Yeah. They have Grinch Hershey kisses. Okay. It's everywhere now. Oh dear. Yeah. And people wear the holiday clothes, people wear the sweaters now, and all those things. It's really become uh, a, a very interesting time of year. Well, yes, the, the uh, sweaters, I, I had a sweater one time that I would consider a, a horrible sweater. <laughs> so I sort of stay away from the Christmas sweaters. The Christmas. Well, <laughs> now, it's red and green. Everything's red and green at the holiday time. Yes. Yeah. And the the trees are really something to see, though. Now, oh, you yes. talked about how you'd had an artificial tree. D did you ever have a real tree? Yes, I have had. Yes, I did. I dragging them out of the front door and the needles all over everything. <laughs> yes. Real trees are difficult. <laughs> I would go. Um, yeah, while I was in um, Washington, and when I was in Columbus too. Uh, going to the stores to look at the windows, the Christmas decorations in the windows was always fun. Yeah. You know, that's a big thing too in New yeah. York and yeah. Washington and all the big cities, Columbus mm -hmm. included, mm -hmm. they decorate the windows in these stores beautifully at yes. the holiday time. Yes, Lazarus, we used to go see Lazarus decorations every year. Yeah. And a lot of these Christmas movies have Ohio ties, Christmas things. The Christmas Story House is up in Cleveland. Is it? Yep, that was used in the movie. Oh, the really? The exterior of yeah. that that uh, film. And now in Columbus, one of the great attractions is the Columbus Commons, which is on the, the premises of the old city center mall. It's just lit up with Christmas lights from November, right? I think it's the Saturday before Thanksgiving through New Year's. And it's free. Yes. Anybody can come to the courtyard and see these beautiful lights. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, did you ever have much decoration on the outside of your house? When I was growing up, we did. My dad would put up blue lights. We had a um, peak like that where the entrance to the house. And he'd, he'd put blue lights around that, around the evergreen trees right there at the front. And uh, I always liked that. <laughs> Well, and it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing when you can, because it gets so dark in December. Uh huh. And you can drive around yes. and see all these lights. Yes, yes, that's so much fun. It is. Yeah. And I know there have been Christmas bus tours, and I know mm -hmm. the zoo now in Columbus does their light show. Oh, they do quite a show. And then, of course, um, Upper Sandusky has that beautiful display. Have you ever gone to that? I've been to that. Yeah, I, that, I, I love that. Oh, and you've got to go and get there early because yes. it is a <laughs> line forever, but it's worth it. Yes, it's and then then this one person has this house connected to his lights, uh, the um, radio connected to the lights that you know, they, you know, they react to the music, the lights do. And we always stop and see that too in the upper. <laughs> and, and, and and people put a lot of time and effort into this for this one month a year. Yes. And it's for really other people's enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Because once they see it once, they've seen it. Yes. But right. for somebody else to come, it's a great thing. Yes. And people take pride in this. I've noticed when I go out and walk at night, uh, people started putting up their Christmas decorations in the beginning of November when the weather was still okay. Yes, our, my neighbor put their tree up before November. <laughs> now, you know, now that's one thing. I, I, I got to tell you, Mary Ellen, when people put this stuff up before Christmas, it kind of takes a little bit of the zing out of it to me. Because well, yes, it's, it's a little too soon. It's a little too soon. But then somebody let the things burn all year round. I mean, they've got their Christmas lights on year all year. I know. Some, some people never take them down. No. So they're always ready for the holiday. Yeah. You know, when it comes right down to it, it we're so busy at Christmas. There are parties, there are events to go to, people buy presents, people have to wrap, get the trees up, the decorations, all of this. When it comes right down to it, what is the true meaning of Christmas to you? Oh, worse, when you go to church. <laughs> yeah, church. And now, do you still go to a Christmas Eve service? I, I haven't, well, I haven't in the last couple of years. Well, I've had a broken leg last year, so I didn't go, but I, um, 
Yeah, I, I usually go uh, to it. Now, for people who haven't been to a Christmas Eve service, why is that so special? Well, it's, you know, it's, that's what Christmas is. It's about uh, God and Jesus, so. And these churches do uh, a lot of work and take a lot of time to take people in during the holidays and show them what is behind all this. That's right. Not just the commercialization mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of what the holiday is. Yes, right. And so many things. I mean, there's Twas the Night Before Christmas, which is out there. Uh, yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus has mm -hmm. become a hugely famous uh, Christmas moment for people. Christmas, I, I guess it's a letter. It's not really a poem, but it's always reprinted in newspapers all across the country. Every year there have been movies made about it. It really is a special time of year. Yes. <laughs> I can't imagine what it would be like to spend Christmas in a warm climate. It's different, you know. Uh, they do have um, false, well, they light up the palm trees down in Florida. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's just different when you're down there. I would think so. Yeah. Now, from Christmases in Ohio to Christmases in, in Washington or Bethesda, what are the differences? Are there really any big differences? No. Hmm. Very similar? Very similar, yeah. Now, when you were treasurer of Ohio, did they have big parties in Columbus? You know, I don't remember um, being at big parties. Um, what did I do when I was state treasurer? We had, um, well, we were off work. <laughs> it was a holiday. Uh, yes. Um, I'm trying to remember... Uh, I hadn't thought about that. You know, all of this uh, is so long ago. <laughs> uh, what did I do when I was in Ohio for Christmas? I don't know. I think I went home and had Christmas at home. And well, so we would have had part. I'm sure we had parties. Yeah. Now, when you were treasurer of the state of Ohio, mm -hmm. how how big of an office did you have? And well, what, it was in Columbus, right? Yes, I had a 182 employees. I was on two floors of the Rhodes Tower, um, and um, I I don't remember um, having parties, but. I think we did. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure something happened. <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> now, when it comes to buying gifts for somebody, do you find it hard to buy gifts for certain people, Mary Ellen? Well, um, yes, I, I think it is sort of hard for some people, but um, I, I don't. Uh, it, it's I don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is is there something you go to? Are you a person who likes to buy gifts, or do you do gift cards? We see a lot of that at Christmas now. I give the money to my daughters and they buy the grandchildren's presents for me. <laughs> they can pick them out. Yeah, they, yeah. they pick them out because I don't know what they want. Are there any big differences between being mom, grandma, great grandma at yes. Christmas time? Yes, great grandmas separated more. I mean, you know, the great-grandchildren, it's just they're farther away, yeah. Yeah, at the holiday time, you know, the further removed you are, it gets a little more, uh, yeah. because you just no, you don't see them as often. That's right. It's it a little different. That's right. On Christmas Eve, did you ever have any special traditions that you did? Yes, we, we went to church, yeah. Now, did you ever do the milk and cookies that people put out for Santa Claus? Yes, yeah. I, I kept watching for Santa Claus. I never saw him, but... <laughs> no. He's out there somewhere. He's out there somewhere at yeah. Christmas time. And you know, that has become one of the great uh, parts of Christmas for so many people, is the child's first Christmas on Santa's lap. It's a nice thing for people. Yes. I'm going to take my cat to have his picture taken with Santa Claus. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. December 7th in Green Camp. Oh, oh, is Green Camp having a special... They're having... Um, Pets take pictures with pets with Santa oh, Claus. Yeah. Well, that's nice. I know he's looking forward to it. Well, that'd be fun. Now, does your cat get in the car easily? 
Well, he does what I decided. He's <laughs> you decide that he's, <laughs> he's going to have to get in the car on that particular well, day. I, I had him blessed. He was blessed about a month ago, and he purred all through it. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, that, now, what's your cat's name? Barney. Barney. Mm -hmm. Now, how long have you had the cat? I've had him, uh, it's gone on three years. It'll be three years in January. Yeah. Now, what's it like to have a pet around the house? Oh, it's wonderful. I don't know what I'd do without Barney. Yeah. It's nice to have a pet when you live alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I was watching television today and this woman was saying that her doctor had recommended she get a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, that's right. I mean, there's a lot of cats at Primrose. Oh, I bet so. And a lot of dogs, too. But <laughs> You know, a dog is a lot more difficult to take care of, though. Well, you got to walk it. you got to walk it. That's the only it. reason I don't have a dog. Yeah, I don't want to walk it twice a day. Now, I know uh, Marion has really come into their own here in Pashkirs. We have a white or a light, or a Christmas tree lighting. We have yes. a parade that goes through downtown where people decorate their trucks now with lights and mm -hmm. all kinds of things. Yeah, it's nice of. to see that the holidays... <laughs> are uh, still out there and yes. people still make an effort. Yes, I, I, I didn't know they still have a parade. They still have a parade. Yeah. They've moved it to the evening. It used to be in the morning, but now they have it in the evening. I think it's the first Saturday after Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. So it's nice that all these things still go on, traditions still go on, and down in Founders Park, they light the Marian Christmas tree, and I think they have a bunch of trees around that area. Oh, where? Uh, Founders Park. Where's that? That's on Church Street. Oh. It's uh, almost down to where Mount Vernon splits. Mm -hmm. Church and Mount Vernon split. It's right there. And uh, during the holidays, they have these big cutouts of Christmas characters. And mm -hmm. they really do a nice job. Yeah. You know, there's always something to do at Christmas. Well, there's a lot of beautiful homes decorated in Marion. To drive around and see all those, we always do that. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a fun thing because this is really all it boils down to is tradition. Mm -hmm. Food, church services, mm -hmm. getting together with family, songs, whatever it is, choirs. It's, uh, it's really about tradition. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and everything that goes into this. And again, if you would like these recipes, you can contact us and we will send you a copy of the recipe. And it's just been a lot of fun remembering Christmas's past, Mary Ellen, because I think that it is a little different to look at things in Washington, like the ornaments here from Treasury and the pictures with uh, Bill Clinton as president and things and letters that were sent out and the gifts that were sent out. This is really unique because not everybody had this experience. They did, right. When you look back on this, what, what's it make you think? When you see that picture with uh, Bill Clinton at a White House Christmas party, what do you think about? I think it was fun. I, it seems like a lot of fun. It was fun, yeah. With about a minute left, Mary Ellen, what does Christmas mean to you in the broad scheme of things? Well, I think it, it makes you think of um, uh, the past. Uh, you know, you think about other Christmases and and um, I, had, I had forgotten so much about what I told you tonight. Uh, I had, um, it helped me to remember, I had totally forgotten about the uh, potlucks at the Treasury and, and those uh, dinners that uh, Bob Rubin would have. Um, yeah, all, all of that, um, it was a good time. And we want to wish our audience a very Merry Christmas. Yes. Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year.